Good afternoon. I'm Bob Busey, a hydrologist with the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center. And I'm here to bring you the Alaska 2023 Spring Break Breakup Outlook. We hope you are all staying safe. As I'm sure everyone watching realizes, there have been a number of serious floods over many of the communities up and down the Yukon and Kuskokwim. Our thoughts are with all of you, and we hope that uh, things are healing. And as a reminder, it's always a good idea to be flood ready. What does that mean at this point? Well, I'm sure you're all prepared, but if it's not too late to start. You should have an emergency plan that includes your family, your friends, and your pets, and you should have an emergency package of some sort that includes local foods from your pantry, any prescription medicines, maybe a first aid kit. It's also a good idea to move your vehicles to higher ground. So if you have any trucks, quads, anything like that, four-wheelers, ATVs, until the flood threat is gone, try to move them to higher ground if you're able. So we're about most of the way through uh, breakup, but I just wanted to highlight a key piece is the snowpack going into breakup, the ice thickness at the moment and the strength of it, as well as uh, what the spring weather patterns have been. We're going to touch base on those briefly here in the next slide or two. This is what the, the snowpack was for 2023. This is April 1st, and for the most part, we're, we're like uh, average, normal. These, are, these blues show like a little bit of average one to one and a half times. Fast forward to last week, this is what our snowpack looked like. We do experience quite a bit of melting, and for uh, much of the low-lying parts of the state, we had 0 to 15% uh, snow compared snow water equivalent compared to what we were in April 1st. However, most of the mountains, quite a bit of snow. Most of the North Slope, quite a bit of snow. Let's fast forward to yesterday. An impressive amount of melting since as we've reached further into May. Basically now it's just the North Slope and uh, Seward Peninsula and the, uh, the Brooks Range plus, plus a bunch of mountains in the Alaska Range and further south. Everywhere else is just a minimal amount of snow. Well, if the snow is gone, that means it's now in the river. So be careful, be careful out there. And don't forget to think twice on ice. This is our, uh, the next two days outlook for floods. And we were, I wanna highlight that we, are, we do have some real concerns over this week. The next two days we're anticipating some good flood potential for upriver of Bethel in the Kalskag and down to Luxac and on down to the lower reaches of the Kuskokwim, as well as uh, the Buckland area is seeing some active flooding as of today, Thursday. So be, be careful and uh, be safe and move your vehicles to higher ground if possible. Another couple of areas I want to highlight is there's an ice dam uh, above Ruby, and there's still intact ice in the Bishop Rock area of below Galena. That all has the potential for forming ice dams, and there, it's Ice jams are pretty unpredictable, so just be, be aware and be on high alert. The next phase of water over the next week or so is going to be the upper Yukon and Porcupine, where a whole a big pulse of snow melt from Canada is coming down. So this, this is our current river status. We're kind of moved to mostly open, which is a big change from last week, aside from the North Slope. And uh, mostly open means not a lot of ice in the channel. Mostly it's just pretty much river, ice on the banks. I also want to highlight there's a number of communities here with uh, flood watches and warnings, and I would direct you to our webpage, weather.gov forward slash APRFC, and you'll, you can get tuned in on all of our watches and advisories that are active. So spring breakup outlook, uh, pretty much we're going according to our forecast here. This is the, uh, the averages for the, the last historical record, and these dates are pretty much like all falling into the past now in the eastern interior, eastern part of the state, and the present for the western part of the state. North Slope is still very soon, the near present. We are still seeing western Alaska is going 8 to 11 days late. I'll hop over, this is the, our actual breakup dates. On the Yukon, it's ranged from 4 to 8 days. And uh, we had Ruby go out yesterday, and we're anticipating Galena the next day or two, and by the time we've talked next week, probably on further down towards Cal Caltag and Holy Cross. This is the Kuskokwim, and uh, Nikolai was the first big break on the Kuskokwim last week, and that was one out nine days, and we're holding to the 9 to 11. So uh, two days ago, Kalskag went out. 
upper and lower and where there's an ice jam down below there. And so we're waiting on Tuluksek and probably the rest of the Kuskokwim hopefully will go quietly because there's a lot, now a lot of rotten ice in that neck of the woods. Temperature is about normal. Basically, you can see the pie charts. There isn't a lot of weight. Slightly cooler in the Bethel area, uh, slightly warmer in the eastern Europe, eastern Alaska. This is more specifically, this is Bethel, and you can see mostly temperatures are above freezing at this point. Any snow is pretty much becoming no snow. And uh, if we look at the hydrograph, all that no snow is turning into a big stage on the, the Kuskokwim. This is Crooked Creek, and there's a lot of water. We're at action stage there. If we go back and look at the mouth of Bethel, not a lot of water. There's a lot of water, but there's no, no breakup yet. So there's going to be even more on top of this once the breakup front arrives. This is the Kotzebue area. Uh, Kotzebue Airport, and I wanted to take a look at the Kobuk, no attack, what might it be going on there. Basically, it's still staying cool. Uh, Eastern, if you look on the Kayakuk around Bettles, it's been hot there, and there's a lot of snow that's melted, and you kind of saw that in the snow map. But if you're looking at the Kobuk area, not a lot of melting. Looking at uh, the Kayakuk at Hughes, quite a bit of melting. Hopping over to Canada, this is uh, Dawson, and we're still... The snowmelt peak came quite, quite shortly after the breakup ice front passed, but it's pretty much stayed at that level over the last several days, and we're anticipating that this water is going to be hitting Fort Yukon in the, over the next few days. Some other water that's going to be reaching Fort Yukon is this big pulse coming from the Porcupine, and they are also at action level and uh, anticipating this is going to move down the river and end up at Fort Yukon and enter the, the Yukon proper. So there's a lot of water. Uh, this is what uh, Mostly Broken Up looks like. This is at Sleep Mute. Nice, quiet now after all that, uh, all the ice that just used to be. Uh, this is uh, from our Riverwatch team, the next two photos. This is the below Kalskag. This is the, the ice jam. And then if we go a little further down, this is intact ice just above Tuluksak. On the Yukon, this is uh, Tanana after the ice has gone out. You can still, still quite a bit of ice in the channel and quite a bit of ice on the banks. Meanwhile, down below Galena, this is at Bishop Rock, and this is some intact ice, still rotten looking, so we hope it goes gently. A little further south, this is from yesterday, this is uh, near Nulato and Kayakuk, and you can see a big pan behind me and a bunch of broken up ice. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for contributing on all of our community phone calls. Thanks for reaching out to us through our webpage and email, uploading pictures, calling us, uh, but we're always happy for more. Feel free to share and feel free to visit our webpage, weather.gov forward slash APRFC, or hit us up on social media. Thanks.